Okay, one, two, one, two. Um, do you have sound, please? Can you tell me if the sound is back? Uh, oh, man. Oh, so the sound is good. Did you have sound and image? Um, can you tell me, please? Oh, hi, Guillaume. So it's okay now? Okay, um, my guest had a sound problem, so I hope it will work. Um, it might, okay, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> restart everybody. Sorry about that, once again. So I wanted to say, um, all is not so quiet on St. Patrick's Day, but we're gonna try to go live anyway. There you go, <laughs> there was a big, a small tribute to you too. So um, everyone, happy St. Patrick's Day, and let me please now introduce my uh, suffering, uh, no, it's not that, uh, pa, 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 comments, my guest, which is, hi, <laughs> The whiskey novice, Jim. Bonsoir, Hi, Gregoire. Bonsoir, Gregoire. Ah, <laughs> bonsoir, mon ami. Uh, so I wanted, to, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do that surprise with the uh, U2 intro, but <laughs> you see how mess <laughs> it was. <laughs> Classic. Thank you, uh, Chris. <laughs> so just a quick check before we start, really. Hi, Tony. Thank you for the feedback. Hi, Guillaume, G2DM. Faithful as always, Krasimir, Meno, uh, Donna Pass, Krasimir, yeah, and Chris. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, this is a special uh, St. Patrick's Day live with all uh, that sh that is around. We're trying to <laughs> go through. Tough day for me, for me, and uh, I don't want to speak too much about that. I, mean, I don't want to be sad, uh, me, family-wise, etc. Uh, but uh, we hope the things are going to be better soon. And um, yeah. what is on yeah. your hand? I think it's a Jim's hand. And it's uh, probably a Guinness, right? That is Guinness. Oh, yeah. And nice North Star T-shirt, by the way, uh, Jim. Like it is actually so, green. This light doesn't really show it off, but it's oh, green for... <laughs> so I had to change my camera. I hope it's not so bad because the other one is better. Last live I made, it was it was good, and now it doesn't work. What the hell? The technique is a problem. Uh, can you please so uh, introduce yourself a bit for those who don't know you? Uh, Whiskey Novice is a recent channel, but you're not new to whiskey and not new to music. I love your background, my friend. <laughs> so uh, the time I pour myself something, can you introduce yourself quickly? Uh, thank you. I, uh, anyone who doesn't know me out there, I am Jim, the Whiskey Novice, uh, here in the north of Ireland on St. Patrick's Day. This is what I do for a living, but, uh, but this is what I enjoy doing. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, Aaron, with only one R. Because in Scotland, we have Aaron with two R. And in Ireland, you have Aaron with one R. And it's an island as well, right? Uh, is or is it? Uh, there's the, the island of Aaron in Scotland, I know. Uh, because I, what I did realize recently is that you also have a Jura, which I didn't know in France, uh, as with the island of Jura. Uh, because I will be sampling a whiskey from Jura very soon. Oh. Uh, for, as in Jura, France. That's but, uh, we'll get to that. Uh, I don't, I don't okay, so I will <laughs> let you continue while I'm pouring myself a black bush, which is basically a, a nice blend from your place. You forgot to tell us, <laughs> my friend, yeah, 10 years old, you forgot you, to tell us a very impressive thing. It's your uh, living in the... Uh, and we are short cutting now the history thing. You're living in Antrim, which is the the place where everything it seems started about Irish whiskey, right? Yeah. Or officially, um, at least. 
Yeah, well, yes. Uh, of course, Bush Bushmills Mills is on, yes, is on the north coast uh, in County Antrim. It's about 40 minutes drive for me from here. Oh. So it's, it's not too far away. But uh, honestly, and and I know you like your bush bills, Greg, so uh, yeah, I I'll, not, I'll, not, I'll not put them down too much. But there, I just find what what always annoys me about bush bushmills is is this forty percent thing. I know, they, I know. They do too much, in my opinion. But uh, but their whiskey in particular, I I love this ten year old. Uh, okay, forty percent okay. again, but I just find it fresh, really fruity. And this is what yeah, I want to start with. Starting with the uh, the black bush, which is very mm -hmm. thin. In, on the palate as well, but very refined thing, sophisticated mm -hmm. blend. Uh, do you know this uh, this stuff, uh, Jim? Murphy's, Murphy's. well, that's Irish, the Irish, that's the red ale. Uh, Murphy's make a stout as well, which is very like Guinness. It's, the Murphy's stout uh, was pretty much for a long time the only competition for Guinness. So oh, okay. a bar, a bar would either sell Murphy's or Guinness. So uh, I you know, will answer to Chrisimir. Yes, but it's very, uh, it's something sweet. It's a starter. It has this sherry thing and this uh, typical uh, Irish style. Uh, we're going to speak about. Uh, but if you're coming from the cast string, single cast Scottish stuff. You might not like it. It's a blended whiskey. Don't forget that. Forty percent ABV, colored, chill filtered, etc. But uh, I will still advise it if you want to discover Irish whiskey. I don't know if you, yeah. are, Jim. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, oh, it's a good a good one to start. Uh, I mean, you're coming there from the north. I actually like. I quite like the red, the the, the Bushbells red that was released a couple of years back. Because it's there's a sweetness. It's quite grain heavy, so there's yeah. there's, there's an awful sweetness about that that I I liked. I did the uh, the Bushmills tour oh, quite a few years ago, and then did it again last year. I'm uh, jealous. <laughs> it's yet again. It lets me. I I feel a little. I always consider Bushmills to be our distillery. Obviously, it's 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 yeah. just. But it, it just found it a little let a little bit of a letdown because they're just. They could try a bit harder, put it like that. Uh, I think Bushmills has been around so long. It's been yeah. owned by so many people. It's just... Yeah, it's that's the problem. Yeah. We don't see a proper direction with something more demanding than uh, fulfill the average consumer uh, uh, wish uh, yeah. and then keep very, very few of the rest for uh, travel, retail, and even... Mm -hmm for uh, something um, a single cask for store picks or stuff exactly. so I would like to see like you I would like to see more choice more 46 percent ABV mm -hmm. non-children stuff but it doesn't seem to be the company's goal yet again and uh, I have to apologize to the viewers we had a lot of uh, postal issues, me and Jim. So yeah. we were supposed to try some uh, blind samples, me and him, today. But we didn't receive the parcels, uh, either me or Jim. I hope we will, <laughs> because yes. I want to try some stuff that I don't know from uh, Jim and uh, likewise. But for now, I have 16, 18 bottles on my table, which you, just a minute, yeah, maybe you can see some and it's not sure. Uh, but uh, I have also some samples. Um, preparing a topic on my website about some rare stuff. Uh, I don't want necessarily to try today, but I might crack one. Um, and also, um, we still have a choice here. I don't know about uh, Jim's choice, but I'm sure he had a lot of interesting stuff. I have things from basically three distilleries. Uh, also, apologies if you wanted to have the most up-to-date uh, live or video about Irish whiskies. This will be part of another one, and maybe with Jim, I, I will love it as well, because I haven't tried any Dingle, any uh, what else? Uh, I noted down any uh, Waterford. 
Waterford as well. Uh, so I don't know their new stuff. I had the new make of the Shred, a new distillery mm -hmm. a few years ago. That was nice. Uh, there's no recent tealing I have tried. Since two years, I haven't tried uh, any new one. I don't have any in my collection. I know it's a pity. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're missing some stuff. Oh, Luna's here. Cheers and uh, bon appétit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whiskey straight all is there as well. Uh, I have some I forgot to put on the table, but I know why. It's because it was a blind for Jim. <laughs> ah. A bottle I like a lot. Uh, so I might not talk about it uh, if you <laughs> manage to get the, I'm sorry, to get the sample, but it's the one I already took on my website. Uh, it's a clue. Um, what cheers, my friend. I'm going to accept. Yeah, cheers, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day and happy, uh, and happy Patrick's wish you all Day. the best to, uh, to you and the good health to everyone. Exactly. Yes. Stay safe. Um, what is Chrismir saying? 22 uh, euros you speak about the black bush, I guess. Or maybe, hi Billy, welcome on board as well. Uh, let's go back a bit on the chat. Uh, finishes, I don't know about special finishes, Meno. Uh, did they do, maybe you know, Jim, they did special finishes this year. Um, they, the steam ships, I th the steam ships were all finished slightly different. Uh, Travel retail. Yeah. Uh, they, they do try, but yet again, they'll tend to stick to travel retail or distillery only for special finishes. What I'm starting to find finally, and it's starting to come about now, are uh, independent bottlings, more and more independent oh, bottlings yeah. of bush mills. So, oh, yes. uh, and, and, and to me, other people are doing better jobs with Bushmill spirit than Bushmill I agree with you. Well. So. Yeah. I know there's uh, several indie bottlers. Uh, um, whiskey agency, I'm not sure. The Nectar, I have one here that Alice had a, a misadventure. Ah, yes, that's the I waited me, five yeah. years for that. Uh, they were uh, 22, 24, 26 years old, uh, mm -hmm. undisclosed Bushmill. Bush Mills, and uh, this one is only 42.2 ABV. It has lost a few centiliters uh, while waiting on my cabinet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm, I have sealed it. So for now, I will leave it a few months to see if it recovers. Mm -hmm. The finish is still wonderful, but it doesn't have uh, the, the starting and the, the whole palate experience it had when I mm -hmm. tasted it at some friends. So I'm very sad about it. It was a gift for a birthday. It's now something that's probably more expensive now. Uh, yeah. But you can offers from, I think, maybe Cadenhead as well. Uh, they do a lot of Irish whiskey. Uh. Yeah, I th I've heard one said about Cadenhead Bush Mills. There's one I've mentioned a few times, um, yeah. the friend at hand in Belfast. Uh, as, as a, sh a whiskey shop, doing a few. And they do a, generally a 13-year-old. Uh, but they put out a cask strength one, and uh, it's been 13 year olds in bourbon casks, and and it's it's got something going on with it. They did one, they finished one in an ex Lafroyd cask. There was 600 uh, bottles went out. So it was interesting. Yeah. And this one is a rum cask, by the way. It's bottled in 2014. Um, it was a joint venture with uh, La Maison du Whisky, the big French shop. Ah, uh, yeah. Honestly, that year at Whiskey Life Paris, we had three beautiful expressions. Mm -hmm. And it was the time, I think, there was the one of my favorite whiskey, which I didn't manage to get uh, from another distillery, Middleton, uh, Barry Crockett Legacy, yeah. which is a beautiful whiskey as well. From I've, I've never actually had, I've had the, uh, the very, I've never had the Barry Crockett. I've had some of the, uh, the very rare, oh. but I've never... 
speaking about speaking about indies there's this one i have to assess for my uh future number irish finest 22 years old it's an indie bush mills for uh yeah, one see nothing sorry uh the whiskey exchange 2016 51.8 wonderful whiskey flavorful Ooh. very pretty uh while we are at samples, I have uh, the Der Galech. I don't know how you spell that, my friend, Der Galech. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not big up on that either. So don't <laughs> I'm going Scottish in this one. Oh, hi, Anthony <laughs> and Nikki. Good to see you there. So, yeah, it's the 57.9 Virgin Oak, 15 to 22 years old, Whiskey Life Paris 20. Uh, 20. 16 uh, yeah and i have three very special one you know necessarily samples uh red breast 21 years old of course but also uh travel retail all sherry or he was master of malt 16 years old all sherry red breast oh nice 60.2 abv i'm very curious it, about this one it is uh, beautiful yet again there's a there's a few uh the, the friend at hand that was mentioned about the bush mills they have a an all sherry uh red breast as well that was released for them and i've had a yeah. sample of it and it this, is beautiful. That, that people from outside france might not know there i tried two times but i have to assess it um it's for the 16 years of La Maison du Whisky, uh, the big store, uh, so store pick, 50, uh, 25, sorry, years old red breast. Nice. But in 2017 at 53.2, first field sherry. Very nice. <laughs> I like, the, 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 the dream, I managed to get a sample of the Dreamcast, the last dream, the red breast oh, Yeah, yeah, they did a lot of things recently, 70, uh, 27 yeah. years old. So, yeah, so was 27, good? 27 I haven't tried yet, but the dream cask that, that came in the small bottles yeah. was oh, mm. beautiful. Real good stuff. <laughs> so before we're going further, I have this much. <laughs> okay. We were interrupted by technical issues, but can you tell us a bit about uh, the beautiful things I see on your background? Because people might not know you're also a singer and musician and you do that for a living. I, I, did, I, I should be singing tonight, but obviously I'm not. I uh, yes, <laughs> I, uh, I do. I, that's what I do for a living. I have done for just over four years now. I, I actually was a, a tire. I, I worked in Michelin tires uh, oh. for 18 years. So uh, oh. I just I was doing this behind the scenes and uh, decided then whenever everything gave up with Michelin, I just decided to take this on full time. And it, while we're working, it pays the bills. But obviously, without mentioning the C word, it's it's obviously mm, stepped out. Okay. But uh, but yeah, this is what I do for uh, for a living. <laughs> so the new drum drinker, a few technical issues of sound on each side. So uh, and also we didn't get the samples we send each other to assess tonight, but still. Like I said, I have 26 Irish whiskies in my collection, and I, I guess um, Jim has some as well. <laughs> He's not obliged to say much. <laughs> Sing a song, says Chris. <laughs> I started by singing a few <laughs> lines of you too, by the way, but uh, it, it did kind of... Uh, so, um, yeah, what kind of music? Uh, I know a bit because I, I've got to listen to your, your YouTube videos, but for the audience, can you we just, tell? We just, yeah, we try to try to, uh, it's, we try to cover classics is the way we put it. You know, it, it's all, all acoustic. So we just try to cover as many classics as possible. Uh, we always get stuff, asked for stuff that we don't do. People think we're a jukebox, but... Uh, we try to we try to do what we can uh, a mixture of stuff, uh, yeah. So it's just we try to we try to do as much as we can. We do we do a little bit of traditional Irish. We do country. We do American. We're gonna yes, put a link. If you it's agree, we're gonna put a link after. Yeah, certainly, my friend. Uh, I appreciate it. And <laughs> so, also, we have a request. I don't know. 
<laughs> uh, 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 I actually it's weird because I find myself whenever I'm doing these especially on my own I dry up and my voice starts to go and, I, and I'm sound and I, I think to myself how did I ever sing whenever I sound like this when I'm trying oh. to talk but and Leah, uh, forget the lyrics <laughs> yeah well I, we have a <laughs> in that too oh uh, yeah fantastic Luna is, knows the good stuff <laughs> See, yeah, I love uh, it's Doland or Purcell. I think it's Doland, John Doland, and uh, I love Alfred Deller singing it, but I cannot go up that high. <laughs> so, no, I don't have a great range. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just asking, you know, as I say, it's, it's this thing that I enjoy doing it to a point, but there's a point where it's, it's work also. So, uh, you know, people, I was speaking to people that I worked with prior to doing this full time, and they say, well, at least you're doing something you enjoy. Yeah, and yeah, I, I know. To them, There's that word again, enjoy, because I do enjoy it, but can, it's Can I say works. there's something uh, bluesy and rock that uh, is a bit a characteristic of your what you're playing, or am I wrong? Yeah, to a certain extent. I do rock, like to solid play. Solid 70s stuff. I do like to... Uh, uh, grab a guitar, please. <laughs> I do like to play blues. It's uh, the blues would sort of still be my uh, the, the sort oh. of thing that I I tend to play. I'm not a. Uh, That's a good question. I, yes, I do. I just seen Anthony. I just seen Anthony asking that. And I do. I love. Uh, I am a rocker at heart. Uh, so. Uh. So uh, Metallica were one of my bands from many, many oh. years ago and things like that. Uh, you were starting uh, the Black Album. Uh, what was the name of the song, man? Anthony, you have to help us to, to discover the song. There's nothing to win, but... <laughs> Uh, that was, um, I can't even remember what you called that. It was, uh, it's from remember. the Black Album, <laughs> it was, it was, uh, but I just I, I tend to, uh, I tend to just guitar for me is just something that I, uh, I do as a as I need it. To. I, I don't uh, want to be a, a ridic uh, paying, uh, being ridiculous, but should we try to do? <laughs> we were talking about Irish whiskey, but <laughs> some Irish, uh, and then everybody's gonna remove from my channel. Uh, one, I have an a Irish, an one. Irish. Oh, a tough one. one from you too, of course. Oh, one. Uh, uh, see if I can remember how to play it. I do remember how to play it. Uh, Ah, I don't remember how to play. I don't know where to place the lyrics. I have them on the side. I don't know where to place them. I'm gonna try to enter it and tell me it's okay. Yeah, let's go back. Is it getting better? Do you feel the same? Is it any easier on you now? You got someone to blame. Is it too late? <laughs> the chords go. Too late. Yeah, can I do the chorus with you? Oh, man. One, right, go ahead. Okay, one love, one night, it's one eat, eat night, one love, get to share it, uh, leaves you darling if you don't care for it. I don't remember the melody now, I, <laughs> no, no, I cannot rival with Bono. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, uh, that's what I do. 
and mm -hmm. I can do wild things. You make my heart sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stuff like that. Ooh. That should be an easy one too. But it's uh, get down. Uh, it's a uh, there's a major chord. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, then do whatever you want, and then we'll go back to whiskey. No problem. <laughs> Some Neil Young, but I cannot sing as Neil Young. I, I, guess. I didn't say this is just uh, something. Oh, I thank do. you so much. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> I, we're gonna put a link so everybody uh, is gonna be able to uh, to check out what it does. Thank um, you. Yeah, I did sing earlier on some uh, Gregorian chants, some medieval chants, and with some jamming bands, some rock and blues, but. Uh, <laughs> But I'm, I'm, I can sing metal as well. But from Metallica, yeah, uh, what can I say? The Four, the Four Horsemen is one of my favorite songs from the first album. Metal Agri, uh, pretty much. Metal Metallica. Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I, or, I first seen them in 1988 in, uh, in Antrim. They played in Antrim. And, uh, we'll fight fire with fire. We all shall die. <laughs> 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 okay, everybody's out now. Everybody not uh, liking metal is gone. <laughs> What's this video? We are supposed to talk about Irish whiskeys. <laughs> I can do several. This is what's happening. I can do it. And And why I do that? Because it's the monks that brought us Saint Patrick. Thank you, whiskey, the distilling uh, process to uh, the Ireland. Ir if it's it's a legend, but and then after that, they uh, Saint Patrick change the things to uh, apply it to spirits that we can drink and not only what was in the ancient Egypt 3000 years ago uh, for uh, makeup and stuff and then I believe and it's an opinion now I believe they brought this first in lowlands and uh, in the Isla mm -hmm. and then in other parts of Scotland because if you see who was doing triple distillation uh, and, and so it was Lowlands and uh, Campbell Town a bit. Yeah. So my guess is that these monks brought first uh, the distillation process to the island and then moved to the uh, west of uh, Scotland. I don't know what you think of this theory. <laughs> no, I, I, I find that very interesting because I, I wasn't I wasn't aware of that actually. I you know I don't I hadn't went that far back. <laughs> Yeah, I have prepared things about history uh, of uh, Ireland, explaining the Celts at 12th mm -hmm. century brought uh, the Aquavitae, Oshkabo, and then also it is said that uh, the explorer Walter Raleigh uh, brought back a whiskey cask in Cork, where right. Middleton is going to be, uh, and then also it is said that uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, and uh, Pierre Le Grand from Russia uh, liked a lot uh, Yushka Bo. So Saint Patrick passed the technique to, uh, of making whiskey between uh, uh, Eastern and Western, but it's a legend. Then what we know, and you're going to tell me if I'm correct, is that for sure that uh, King James, uh, I read here on my website uh, on Parallel, I hope you still can see me, on uh, mm -hmm. April 20 of uh, 1608, uh, year 1608. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show the whiskey that celebrates that for the 400 years. Uh, Bush Mills, beautiful whiskey that you had a sample of, but we'll see. <laughs> um, <laughs> who, uh, uh, governor of Ulster, Sir Thomas Philip uh, Phillips, uh, did a grant the first distilling license to the uh, area of Antrim, the county where you are, <laughs> in mm -hmm. fact, 
where there were a lot of um, um, illicit uh, smuggling smuggling uh, distilleries, including the Bush Village with a lot of uh, mills that will become uh, named uh, Bush Mills. But the it is also said it's only in 1784 that uh, the old Bush Mills distillery was recorded. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and I read here that the, in my searches, past searches, that there were uh, 1,228 distilleries and even more around uh, the 18th century before that. So it's okay. a crazy story. Yeah. And then there's the story about, but I don't want to bother too much people. In 1830, Amy's Coffee, sorry for my uh, pronunciation, mm -hmm. who was a Dubliner, but born in France, crazy story. He perfected the distilling process uh, that Robert Stein uh, created in 1826, the patent steel or cafe steel. And then instead of applying to the malt whiskey, because the, the, the uh, Irish didn't want malt whiskey, but uh, the Scottish understood it could be interesting for blended whiskey, uh, it used that for uh, um, uh, continuous steel for grain whiskey. And then, and I'm not gonna stop that because it's too long story. Uh, in 1825, the three brothers Murphy founded Middleton Distillery uh, around Cork. Uh, and this is now a museum and there's another distillery. Uh, Middleton, for those who don't know, it's uh, the parent company that does different brands such as Green Spot, Red Spot, etc., and all the Jamson range. Yeah. Jameson Powers, uh, between others, and uh, yeah, and the other thing to mention, and then maybe I'm gonna let you speak. Story is the fact that in 1972, uh, and officially in 1973, um, uh, the there were many takeover uh, about Irish distilleries and. The owners of these uh, three different distilleries uh, and more, I think, even they didn't want to be um, in the ownership of England, and one might not and uh, might understand why. <laughs> so they decided to be under a French ownership, Pernod Ricard, and then Middleton went uh, uh, the owner of uh, many of these uh, distilleries. Uh, uh, it's a short story. There's many other things to say, but I don't know if you want to add something to that. Just at, 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 at <laughs> North Albany, it is Albany. It is I'm going to try thing. this one, and I'm going to make sure you're going to have some of this anyway. If any, if, we will wait for this Corona yes. shot yes. shit to st stop, and we'll start again. Send you other things because, uh, but I don't know. Maybe we can still get the these sample parcels. I don't know. Yeah, we'll I'm going to take that. another look, my friend. I'm not going to let that one go. So I'm not. Anyway, again, uh, cheers for everyone coming back, coming now. We're trying several whiskies to celebrate St. Patrick. And this is an excuse to speak about the story of Irish whiskey and also to discover our friend Jim, <laughs> who is kindly uh, the guest here. Um, yeah, what's the gone. chat saying? Sorry, because I lost the chat a bit. Hi, the whiskey friend is there, Alan. A Redbreast 12, okay. Paddy is the classic with his apples notes, baked apple notes, right? Uh, yeah, lots of stuff uh, still about this, yeah. Corona shit, <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm trying this, which is made with with crystal malt, which is a special kind of malt. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's a blended whiskey, but mind you, 95% malt. So it's almost a single pot still, in a way. Yeah, there's four categories, uh, basically, yeah. uh, of uh, Irish whiskies. Uh, and you're gonna, I'm saying that under your control. <laughs> um, blended whiskey, which is probably the main one. Mm -hmm. With uh, yeah. grain, corn, and uh, and barley, malted barley. There's a single pot still which mixes unmalted barley and malted barley and another grain, usually corn, and the single malt whiskey made only with malted barley. 
one of the most and single grains of course on the side for instance killed again which is a part of Cooley uh, mm -hmm. distillery which has been renamed uh, trickily in killed again which is confusing for me <laughs> recently I see bottles where they there's written Cooley and killed again as the, totally, uh, agree. totally agree even their, web, even their websites are very confusing because if you go in yeah. if you look uh, Kilbeg and it'll generally direct you yeah, to Yeah, I don't people. understand, and I think there's a great problem of ownership of Cooley. I preferred yeah. Cooley before uh, the uh, Beam Suntory uh, ownership because now there's only one expression, almost only one, for at least for our uh, European mm -hmm. market, the Distillers Edition, which is not my favorite. Uh, speaking about Cooley, 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 Cooley. Cooley. Two great brands, they do. More interesting for me than Kilbegan, there's Connemara and Tierkernel. Tierkernel is still, I think, existing. Uh, yeah. But yeah. they have repackaged everything. This is a bit old. This is the no age statement, which is around seven years old, which is often mm -hmm. the case in, in Irish whiskies. They not bottle too much at three years old, maybe some Indies, but. Um, and this is single malt, mainly bourbon driven bourbon cast driven and uh, this is a very nice one and it was a great value around 30 euros at the time in france right we cannot find it too much now uh while i'm on tierkenel one of my very favorite and you had a sample of that as well it's the madeira cask finish at 46 percent fantastic nice nice uh oh luna says there is some echo on your side I don't this know. This is Cooley too, obviously. Yeah, Tilling. Uh, so, yeah, Cooley was uh, founded by the brothers uh, Tilling. Yeah. And the Tilling, uh, at some point, uh, and there's Sweeney and other people involved, they left the company to build their own distillery. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. before uh, releasing their own uh, creations, distillate, distillated by themselves, they did have a lot of stock from Cooley. So the, the amazing gang, uh, the funny gang for me was at the beginning of Kool-Aid to, to, uh, uh, to guess which of the two distillate, uh, Connemara or Tirconel, they were bottling. Most yeah. often it was the, the Tirconel, right? <laughs> Tirconel stock. It, it just has everything. Uh, Kool aid really has a very, very distinct nose and uh, very flavor. And this is why whenever I tried Tailing and Tirconel first, you just knew it was, uh, it was kool -Aid. Uh, I'm going to answer shortly to a uh, new drum drinker. Uh, yes. Before that, I just wanted to point out uh, something special I forgot to mention. is most often uh, the Irish distillery, uh, let's say historical ones, Middleton, Bushmills, and uh, Kool Aid's a different thing. They were a triple distilling their whiskey. Yeah. But uh, Connemara uh, brand is double distilled only and pitted. Pitted, yeah. But as in Scotland, and it's a matter also of how people were hitting their houses with cheap stuff that they could find everywhere. Many of these whiskies uh, were pitted in the 19th century, whether they were Irish or Scottish, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is the only exception. Uh, maybe there are other companies now that releasing other things. Uh, as, like I said, we're not going into very contemporary stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, Jim better than me, but I don't have much contemporary stuff. Uh, still, I have uh, Walsh Distillery that uh, did bottle stock from other distillery writers' tears and the Irish Man. Uh, yeah. But I don't have super recent stuff. This is a Almost single cast. Yeah, this is a single cast from 2008. Uh, distilled in 1992. 15 years old, uh, pitted. Uh, very interesting, uh, also a sample of this. Uh, and one of my very favorite, I don't know, can you tell me if it's still released? I'm not sure. The cast strength, Connemara. I haven't seen the cask strength anymore. Oh, no, it was my favorite expression. I Around could be seven, wrong, but... Very grassy, that, uh, it's, mm. it's a dividing opinion, this one. Very grassy, but also uh, some vanilla stuff. Uh, 57.9 for this one. It's probably my third or fourth bottle uh, of this one. I liked it a lot and rated very high. 
And what I like about it, for those who don't know the brand in his uh, castring expression, it's a kind of um, uh, illegit illegitimate marriage between Art Big and Lagavulin for me. Yes. Because there's a kind of uh, leather and mire and uh, weird uh, dusty notes that are common to those two distilleries, but with a special thing with some citrus fruit, as well as some, maybe some chlorophyll uh, mm -hmm. in it. And it's a very special profile that I think is unique to Conimera, and that's why I like it a lot. So if you come across this bottle, even if in an auction, Conimera cast drink. Try it; you might be surprised. I have the, uh, the classic so edition. Yeah. And Sorry, and I have the classic edition of the Conimera painted, and it just it, it takes. I haven't tried the cask strength, but I imagine it takes something like that because I just find the the ordinary version the just a bit thin. It just yeah. that's why this one exists, and it's much yeah. better, my friend. Believe yeah. me. <laughs> Sorry, Luna um, was asking a while ago what I was drinking. It was just uh, that was from Luna. Go away. It's just the the teeling single malt. So, yeah, good idea. Very um, cool. Before I go to my top five, and I will ask maybe your top five as well. That's Kresimir telling us, yeah, why not? Uh, I will extend it maybe uh, to some bush mills. The sixteen eight. But a 16-8 is gone now, I'm afraid. I still see it on, on, a, on an affordable price, though, um, in, on internet, some, some stores. Um, if you want to start with something soft, I will uh, maybe advise you the Marcella cask finish from the Irishman, uh, which is a Walsh distillery, but it's a brand. It's an indie bottling brand from I them. That's Bush Mills again. I would think. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe the sixteen that the three wood that sometimes comes sixteen years old, but now more discontinued and to no age statement, but it's still good. And of course, and I saw your bottle earlier on, the twenty one years old, which is now a bit expensive, and it's a Madeira finish, but prior to that, bourbon and sherry cask. Right now the price is around 150 or more. I managed to have it half price in Belgium through a friend <laughs> a few it's years ago. Of, is it still bottled at 40 percent? I believe. Yes, but very flavorful in my opinion. So I would say that maybe I will suggest the um, Powers 12 years old or the John Lane. Or John Lane. Yeah. Uh, of course, Red Breast 12. Cannot go yeah. wrong with the Red Breast 12. Red Breast 12, um, very much. But for those who are newcomers to whiskey, oh, um, yeah, this guy, whiskey chase and hi, mate. <laughs> yeah, discontinued, Alice, Alice. Um, most excited about Meno uh, is for me Dingle because. Uh, Graham Cool is the new master distiller, and I liked what he did with uh, Glen Murray. Uh, and uh, Waterford, I'm curious of what they do, uh, trying to go craft uh, yeah. with a lot of yeah. gossip of uh, marketing stuff, even if uh, uh, the question of terror, etc. It's a bit difficult now, I have to say, because how to be terror if you mix uh, 10, 12, or 14 different forms? To do your whiskey it's a bit tricky but i know they have special releases uh, of each farm stuff like that so uh yeah. mark Rainier is running this is come he comes from brooklady a distillery so he knows what he's doing even if he has uh i don't know the 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 expression in english he has maybe too much uh weighted waiting hand uh, on uh, wine cask finishes, which I'm not very happy about, but it's it's a current trend, unfortunately. And I will risk that, which could be a theme for a video. Uh, for me, uh, the new caramel coloring trick is replacing 
caramel coloring by heavily charred cask and wine finish. Yes. Think of this, guys. Think of this. Yeah. Uh, it's some of the way to hide weak distillate or too young distillate. And uh, this way, you're going to have sweetness. You're going to have a lot of vanilla and stuff and spices. But where is the character of this theory? I wonder. And I'm going to be unpopular here. This is the same problem I had with Bimber Richard Cask, I have to tell you, which is English, not Irish. But it was a good whiskey, though. But I prefer you tell me it's a bourbon-like single malt. Then you tell me it's a single malt from a young distillery. Uh, that enhances its distillate. But where is the distillate? I don't know. Many people might disagree because it had a lot of great reviews. But... Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be uh, throwing a video out tomorrow about um, Pendaren. And oh. there's, there's something in that regarding... I'll not say too much because it's my latest review. But, okay. uh, but yet Spoiler. again, it's... <laughs> It's very much along the lines of what you're saying there, Greg, and I'm glad you actually brought that up. Uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, we're asked best Irish whiskey for uh, 50 pounds. I don't know about the price, my friend, in UK. Uh, best Irish whiskey John? for under 50 pounds. I it's would a say. John Lane? Yeah. John Lane? Okay. Yeah. It's a specific 12, probably. It rep does it replace the regular? Uh, Jim, it's, it's it's just the the John's Lane Twelve now, as far as I know. That's, okay, that's so, so it's added added to the uh, range, right? Yeah. Rather than replacing the other, best because let me check. I think. Yeah, mine is at forty percent, but it's an old one. The John yeah, Lane is forty six. Yeah, this is forty. This is forty six. Yeah. Oh, there's a distillery we don't talk about is. Because they had their juice for a long time at Middleton, if I'm not wrong, it's Tullamore Dew. Oh, yeah, Tully. That are now distilling, and I have their sherry cask finished 12 years old for travel retail, which is nice if you like some sourness. Some, uh, It's a bit difficult whiskey until you pass the shoulder, uh, really struggle with it. Uh, it's not only sherry cask, it's, it's there's something very sour in it. You have to like... I always found as a blend, whenever I, if you look, I always considered the five blends, cheap blends, uh, the Pars, uh, Bushmills, uh, yeah. J Jameson, Tullamore Dew, and Paddy. And I always would put Tullamore Dew high up in that, along with Paddy. I always thought they were some of the best cheap blends. They, there, was, there was quality and character with them. I agree. I add another one which I like a lot. For beginners in Irish whiskey, I would strongly recommend the Caskmates Stout Edition, not the yeah. IPA. Like it yeah, less. just the Stout. Yep. From uh, Jameson, so Middleton Distillery. 40% mm -hmm. colored, etc., but very nice brown beer. Uh, mm -hmm. Notes in there, Stout beer. Um, really nice caramel notes, vanilla, and burnt wood but pleasant uh 40 but i think it's a beautiful blend honestly the, the ipa the ipa to me just didn't work yeah uh, there, there wasn't enough For the sweet tooth ones the crested which was crested 10 and has become nes now it's a sweet one if you like some orangey notes in your blend may from the beginners mainly um I have this one, but it's a piece of history now, sorry. Uh, the 12 years old distiller selection, a store pick for France, La Maison Whiskey, 2005. An absolutely beautiful blended whiskey. Very precise on the, these red fruit notes. We didn't talk a lot about the... Uh, we're going to come to that, to the uh, profile. Uh, another, of course, but a bit expensive now. Since they rebranded it, I'm pissed off because this one <laughs> used to be affordable, the 18 years old, but now uh, I think the ABV is a bit higher now, Jim. Uh, what you say? The new I've version. That one. I've never had that one. This is the old one. I haven't actually tried the 18. So, uh, uh, this 18 is wonderful. 
Right. One of the best Irish, most flavorful blended whiskey for me. Um, once again, uh, you have now new distilleries, new indie bottlers, so you can go with tilling single malt, like uh, Jim said, if you want to try. If you, there's good Dean. reviews of Tyrconel, 16 years old. I haven't tried it. Um, I don't know if you tried it. No. Tyrconel. Oloroso and Moscatel casks. Whiskey in the Six did a video about that. I haven't the time to see it, but I recommend you have a look. Uh, usually you agree with what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, Sextons, a uh, new drum drinker. I tried two uh, blended whiskies that were very trendy uh, last year. The Sextons and the Shane. The Sexton with a very weird packaging was okay but not worth the, the price. I found it the Shane more interesting, uh, but go for the well, Jameson. We'll Sext pay you Sext Sexton's really an indie bottling of Bush Mills, yet again. Uh, and not the is best. It, is, it, is it actually Slane you're talking about? Uh, yes, yeah, Slane, sorry, I said it, Shane, but it's Slane. Uh, uh, I haven't actually had Slane yet. It's Charles um, Minow. So I just I look at an awful lot of these and and uh, and 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 it says Sexton on it or it says uh, Writer's Tears on it and I'm looking yep. at them and saying it's Bushmills, it's Middleton, it's Cooley, you know. So and 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 they're very such distinctive new make spirits with such distinctive flavors yep. that it, the 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 maturation doesn't play into them enough to to make them distinctive. Sometimes yes, it's a problem. I'm gonna try this. I don't know if you had it. Uh, it the Irish small batch, uh, 55 54 percent, 2017. Uh, it was part of a tweet testing, by the way. Uh, it's a cast drink. I'm gonna try this along uh, while we're yeah. talking. Possibly looking at Bush Mills. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, not so recognizable. Uh, about this, I would like to say what I found interesting and unique about uh, Irish whiskies, especially single pot steel that they were used to call pure pot steel. I don't yeah. know where they changed the name. Yeah, is I like, <laughs> and I had to check the translations. Hi, Welsh Taro. Um, because I don't know the equivalent in English. So there's a note, there's a current in red breast, for instance, that I like a lot, and I think people like a lot. And it's in French, Bourgeon de Cassis, and it is black currant bud. I don't know if you get this note in there. And also, there's something people almost never speak about that, and I'm surprised in Jameson, especially, uh, style uh, and red breast, it's the peanut note. That comes from me from the unmalt unmalted barley, right? So some kind of peanut, praline peanut mixed with this uh, black currant and blackberry sometimes note, uh, and with the black currant bud, this forms a kind of bouquet uh, in the nose and on the palate, something rich, which for me does the connection between the malted and malted barley and the red fruits, and this comes of course from the share cask. I don't know if you agree. <laughs> I, I will I'm actually well now I'm I'm I've changed it. I know you don't you said earlier you're not a big fan last of the, the last, no, I'm last not a fan of the last hour. Too whiny for me, but I know many people love it. So why why not? Oh it's, good question here. Yeah. You have this on your glass? Yes I have but if to answer Anthony's question that would be my yeah. answer. Yeah I think I agree too but I didn't had uh, honestly a red spot yet, so I cannot tell. I don't know if it's interesting. Can you tell very, us a bit about? I had a very small sip, just to literally try it, so I can't, I can't judge it on that. But certainly, I'll be moving on to the yellow spot here, and the yellow spot is to me just outstanding. Uh, even to answer those that question earlier about top five Irish whiskies, I would have yellow spot all day long. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jim, is it the Malaga finish? One the, Malaga, um, 45 Spanish wine, Malaga finish. Which one? Yellow, yellow spot. Yellow. It is. If you can. 
Yes, there is the Malaga. Okay. While the red spot, uh, tell us, please, I don't remember. Red, oh, what was the red? I can't remember either. Not off Is the top of my head. Port or red uh, wine? It might be port. Somebody port, says, if somebody knows on the chat, maybe they will tell us. Uh, so please, yeah, red um, whiskey, Jason, I'm sure we know that. Uh, red spot, what's red spot uh, finish or a specialty in the maturation, guys, please. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm checking what she says, Lina says. Uh, to answer Lina's question, I was reading that myself. Irish whiskey still does that because the distilleries are so young. Basically, the distilleries haven't produced, started to produce their own whiskey, yet, or they have, but it's just too young to put out. So they're just mm. using everybody else's new make spirit or barrels they've bought in and, and just putting out everybody else. Yeah, so yeah, red spot, we, we, we will find out. I know we can also Google. I don't like to Google while I'm in... Uh, Jason says it's Marcella. Uh, Marcella wine. Okay, thank you. Well, I usually like Marsala, but it doesn't work all the time with uh, anything. I really like the uh, Slears Marsala, my friend. <laughs> By the way, the German whiskey. Uh, okay, bourbon, sh thank you. Bourbon, cherry buds, and uh, Malaga. Malaga, it's uh, rarely used in finishes. Uh, last one I had was a 30 years old Glenmorangie. Uh, very expensive, and by the way, um but it's not often used so i wonder the profile it, it can have the only problem as someone stated it earlier on in the chat yeah welsh toro i think it's very expensive i don't have the i thought it was over 120 euros something like yeah. that Oof. is it yeah. really worth worth no. the uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well it's I like this. We like no double speaking, uh, Greg's with the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, my friend. So yeah, it's it's a nice the, uh, but I don't recognize really the. It's like they rounded everything in in this uh, Irishman company. It's I've, had, some... I've had the Irishman, the standard bottling of the Irishman, hmm. and I tested it at a. Uh, I was I, I bought a bottle in the airport for my father-in-law and. The, the, the girl that was selling it was was doing the big sell with me and I asked <laughs> I asked where the Irishman came from and she said it was it was uh, Walsh distilleries and I said so we're looking at probably Bush Mills then and she went no no it's Walsh distilleries <laughs> I just and I just gave up arguing and bought yeah. a bottle anyway. <laughs> yeah. and also uh, last year or the year before even the year before I tasted their new make for a tweet tasting so it couldn't be Walsh distillery, but the new make was Walsh distillery. And we yeah. it was quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll be curious of what Dingle distillery does uh, and what a to yeah. see if yeah. really Ding brings Dingle. to Dingle's very hard to get even here uh, oh. in Ireland. But you find that, I find that with a lot of good whiskies are very hard to get even <laughs> here. You know, uh, it's... You have a good question. Sorry to interrupt you by New Drum Drinker. That's a great question. <laughs> I'll let you discover it. <laughs> they will be great. <laughs> and uh, and we will pay you with some uh, good whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. I've already, I've, already, uh, I've already spoken to Anthony and invited him over. <laughs> so, uh, uh, having Nick here, well, you're all welcome anytime. You're all, everybody. Oh, Welsh Toro gives us uh, an interesting uh, information. So I didn't know that because it's not very common wine. Moscatel, which is already uh, kind of special wine. Very acidulous red wine. And Pedro R Jimenez, yeah, it's a like <laughs> mistake. I uh, love the stuff, gives a yellow spot a fantastic character. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, probably this uh, that enhances a bit the experience from the green spot. Uh, I have the green spot, by the way. This is something we can still advise people. 
Yeah, I have. Uh, but batches variations, honestly, I tried some beautiful ones. Mine is not super, super good, honestly. It's, Very it's funny. Green Green Spot is. This is why I, I found it very surprising the difference between yellow spot and green spot. Green spot to me is a good whiskey, but it's just a good whiskey. I think yellow spot is a great whiskey. It, the step variance between them is is quite incredible. And then you get into the the, the, the wine finishes on the green spot, the different wine finishes. So and this is a tribute to Ralphie. <laughs> <laughs> Because he loves that. So I'm going to prove now. Nobody can see me. But I'm going to prove now to myself at least that um, trying a Jameson 18 at 40% after uh, Writer's Tears cast drink at 54 can work because the, 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 uh, this expression is very strong in flavor. So I'm not thinking I'm going to go wrong in there. Mm -hmm. We'll see, maybe. Oh. So yet again, Jameson make, do, well, Middleton are very capable of making good stuff. And they prove that with Jameson. They're very capable of making a, a, a good solid that you can hang your coat on steady whiskey, which yet again, sure. I'm, going, I'm going back to Bush Mills and saying, this is where I think sometimes Bushmills need to pull their socks up a bit and 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 start to in a world where we want whiskey of real, real sharp quality and, and you know Bushmills need to start and bring it a bit again. And uh, I agree. Because it's a beautiful distillery. You have special yeah. cask uh, strength uh, single cask for France for La Maison du Whisky a few years ago and they were stunning, a bit expensive already. That's why I didn't bought them. But when you come back in history, uh, in my own history of tasting, I regret because this they were so scarce, so rarely bottled that I should have picked me one. Uh, there was one bourbon cask, 16 years old. I recall about, I think 51.8 uh, ABV. Oh, wow, they were so good. Uh, Luna asks, is uh, yellow spot below 50? I'm not sure. Maybe it's, in your country, but in France, it's more uh, expensive. Yeah, over here, it's more expensive. It's, it's around the uh, 60 pounds mark. So what's that? About so, uh, euro. Okay. About what I was saying, lots of vanilla, lots of uh, citrus fruit, but on top of on top of that, on my Jameson 18, some red fruit and that uh, characteristic... Uh, Unmalted barley, uh, black currant, but that we love in honestly in, in Irish whiskey. I think all of us. See, it's something that uh, would be very pure about what you're drinking. So you know this. Very hard now to get a single pot still outside Sorry. of. Excuse me. Yeah. Well. yeah. Uh, which, which the problem is nowadays that you look for something pure. But they tend to put finishes and everything. So uh, even to get a, 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 you know, you're looking at the red breast twelve or something like that for yeah. a, a pure pot still. But again, I think there are too much batch variations, even in Middleton and some red breast coming on now, fifteen years old, twelve castring are not as good for me as they were uh, in the start around two thousand five. I remember, and we tasted it 10 years ago, uh, after, sorry, and even last year, the Red Breast 15 years old first edition for me was the best of them all. Uh, fucking, sorry, delicious whiskey. Uh, <laughs> beating everything else, honestly, beating everything else. But then they... The other uh, batches, the year following, they were weaker. And now there's sometimes a, a, a more tannic profile, more drier profile. So I'm not very happy about that. Excellent. So I won't buy something without trying and checking the batch number. I'm telling you. <laughs> I tend to find that the, the 15, the, the red breast 15 peels to the 12. 
you know, which yeah. to me, obviously, sometimes it's there's a, there's an age variance there, but I hear an awful lot of people saying it too that the twelve year old is better than the current fifteen. Yeah, I agree. I tasted it uh, last year, and I was surprised because, like I said, first edition of the fifteen was beating everything, even mm -hmm. for me, the twenty one. Believe Very me or not, man. it's a matter uh, of taste, of course. Just for Luna, I'm now on the. Uh, uh, the yellow spot. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. Cheers, Luna. Uh, Lee J has uh, the stout edition, Jameson. Cheers, my friend. And uh, last drop, good night. Take care. Uh, uh, yeah, probably Welsh Toro. I, I, I agree. Uh, it's, it's maybe there's too much production uh, and not enough quality control. I don't know. It's, it's a tough question. Um, but uh, cheers, Lee J. But still, I think there's still good stuff. I, I liked a lot the uh, what was the uh, writer's tears red, uh, red head, but I, I struggle to find in France. Yeah, beautiful one. I like this one. Yeah, yeah, I like uh, it. Yeah, it's, uh, we uh, can recommend this one. Can you show it again and, and tell us the price? point maybe this yeah. one in the top five i will recommend as well generally i find that uh under certainly under 50 pounds uh oh. i think now i've had this quite a while <laughs> as you can see and uh but there's i remember there being a real real rich almost bourbon like mm. feeling with this and the other, another distillery, sorry, just while we're on it, yeah. because the Northern Ireland distilleries are starting to pick up now. And uh, this one, you will not find any more. Uh, yeah, Anthony, I know. Me a Anthony sample. Nick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony and Nicky were on that the other night. And I've actually, uh, I, I bagged myself another bottle of this. I've got a full bottle sitting there as well. So simply for so, the fact that it's a classic. So it's another distillery, or is it a brand from one of those we know? This is Eklundville. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, but it's still Cooley. Ah. It's, it, it's Cooley once again. Uh, but they now are picking up uh, the Dunville's Triple Crown, or Three Crowns. Okay. Uh, this doesn't exist anymore. There's a 12-year-old. They now okay. have an 18-year-old. And one of them's ridiculously expensive. It's in the it's in the hundreds. Oh, but why? Because of the label that that. Uh, no idea. It, it just that, they put it out. That and, sounds like a nineteenth century one, or. <laughs> oh, just as I say, this it and and I mean even I didn't get a chance to try it, but I know people who did, and even they said it was actually over, oaked. It had been. The, the, and uh, Phil from uh, who works for Malt Official, okay, uh, of mine, uh, review, tried this when it was 16 years old and said it was beautiful, stunning mm. whiskey. It had spent, they kept it another two years, kept it, put it in this marvelous presentation box, everything does everything, and uh, and are selling it for it's. 585 pounds or something stupid like that and uh so, and it's just ridiculous price and it's not where he reckons it's over oaked he, he says it's spent too long in the say, sorry would you say it's chercanel uh, juice juice this today yeah it, it is it's still it has to be because it's uh Eklundville only opened in 2011 or something like that 2012 so it has to be yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's just what they hold on to. To answer to New Drum Drinker, I tried it and I found often comments of people who like it. Me, I don't like it because, again, it's too whiny. And uh, to give you an information that maybe I shouldn't, but here we're no double speak. When I spoke with someone I like a lot, so I won't mention who he is uh from this distillery uh it's a great guy uh 
between us, I ask him about red breast lustau. Uh, is it's it is something sweeter that you targeting from another uh, audience, right? Yeah, for women. He told me, <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> but women now, you know, some love uh, heavily peated whiskies and stuff. And he said, yeah, we thought we could attract people, more people, and then women to red breast, which is more a male thing. There you go. I haven't named anyone, <laughs> but that's what I was told about uh, Lustau. <laughs> Sorry. I haven't actually, I haven't tried that one. There's two wine finish green, uh, green spots, I believe. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope it will not be cancelled, you know, but I'm afraid everything is going to be cancelled. I'm very disappointed yeah. today because uh, I had a, bought a ticket to see my latest crush, which I'm in love with. Haley Reinhardt, <laughs> the divine Haley Reinhardt, and uh, she cancelled her European tour uh, yesterday or today, and I had to see her in May. I'm very disappointed. Um, yeah, check it in my channel, uh, in my also in my uh, website, I, in my musical page. I highlighted her work. Absolutely stunning covers of uh, standards uh, in um, a jazz way. With the, uh, I don't know if you know her, uh, Jim. I Haley watched Runner. her. I watched your video and found her. I was reading her history on your webpage. Oh, cool! Uh, Postmodern jukebox. Uh, she did amazing covers of Seven Nation Army of the White Stripes and Creep by Radiohead. Very jazzy. <laughs> Yeah, but also she does blues rock covers. Yeah. She has been so much acknowledged uh, this last decade, despite she's not on the big companies, uh, recording companies, that people such as Jimmy Page uh, did grant her the right to uh, use for six months a license to cover everything from Led Zeppelin she wanted. Wow. And uh, this guy uh, from uh, The Doors, uh, sorry, I forgot the name, Robbie Krieger, sorry. Yes. Uh, the, the guitar player from uh, The Doors invited her on stage to sing Light My Fire. And you have this video on YouTube. So, and it's a crazy wow. thing. She is very, wow. very impressive. Her range is absolutely incredible. Uh, her way of... Uh, doing the character of the the song she 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 sings uh, she is getting the person the per the, the character uh, and she can switch every second from uh, the low to the high register and uh, also do scoops and uh, and scats when she sings jazz yeah. she creates uh, a lot of things in three minutes i'm very very impressed i've never been such impressed in story i must have to say that's it for my love <laughs> praise to <laughs> well i love music you know that jim now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as I said, because i do it for a living i don't necessarily love music anymore <laughs> yeah i know yeah, you told me. i understand plainly that i have musician friends so uh, they uh, <laughs> They also struggle to make a living, and they also uh, haven't got the time to check anything I am sending them. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the chat saying now? Let's check if there's a question for us. Um, just talking with the one with the other. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I agree with you, Luna. I agree with you, and I don't think so because I met the most uh, famous whiskey writer from France, Martine Noué. I don't know if you know her. Let me show you something. She did an absolutely incredible book about whiskey, uh, which is... Uh, and in this thing, she paired 500 whiskies with uh, food pairings. She did food pairings. So, so let's go. Let's see. 
if you let me just a minute in the Irish section just to give you an example could be cool and she loves yeah I forgot to say she lives in Isla and she loves heavily pitted whiskies Luna so be reassured <laughs> there's women who like heavy stuff they're all the real McCoy for some um, for instance stealing single malt Irish whiskey 46 percent she advised this um, to uh, have that with a mango uh, salad with crab so cub yeah crab and mango in salad or with a single grain another thing I won't be able to translate a baba rum I don't know uh, if it sounds cool uh, let me check something else uh, Irish oh why things I cannot translate <laughs> without a dictionary sorry my glasses are down now uh, okay so let's not lose time with this sorry guys so yeah there's a lot of women now who are and to start with the master blender I know some master blenders uh, women who are not sweet like too me. so like Mira yeah Angela Dorazio yeah. Angela Dorazio I know her so she's not a sweet tooth either. Yeah, yeah. crab. No, it was crab. Crab, not crap. <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, it's crab in English as well. Sorry. Okay. Um, I, I just went back to uh, to the tealing there and give it on the nose, and it, there's almost a gin thing. So you after a while. Just you're talking the, the teeling single malt, uh, oh, okay. eating it along with the crab, or having it along with crab, and and there is there's almost a gin sensation off that after a while. Just okay. Not that I'm complaining. I quite like gin. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So, uh, is there a boom in Irish? Uh, before you answer the question from David, is there a boom in Ireland for gins as well as in Scotland? Massive. Absolutely oh, massive. Yeah, it, it, it became, uh, oh, you're going back probably two years ago now, uh, gin started to become a thing. And then bars that I was working in that, that never, that you, if you asked for a gin, you get Gordon's and Tonic. That was pretty much it. All of a right. sudden start, started to put out menus with food in them. You know, the, the, this gin came with uh, uh, different fruit full of and I just thought to myself I was just watching men now I'm not sexist by any means but watching <laughs> men stand in bars with a globe glass this size full of fruit <laughs> and I'm just going buy a pint <laughs> just buy a pint <laughs> but uh, uh, what's you know, your I, yeah uh, sorry that's well, what, so, uh, for the audience obviously uh, if some do not know uh, um, distillers can be interested by producing gin uh, genuinely but let's say most of the time it's not the first reason if they want to produce whiskey they have to wait three or five or seven often years in Ireland so what do they do in the meantime to, to well, get some cash it goes gin. back yeah and it goes back to what Luna was oh, asking God. earlier on about why these these ones are all using somebody else's whiskey. All these go. distilleries that have opened up are all make, are all making gin. Nearly every one of them. So I know it's a tough question, but David has a has a good one. I could t I could tell you my and I'm I'm going to go back to it again, but I'm actually going to say my current favorite is still yellow okay. spot. I I just I find it very now the best Irish whiskey. I would say I have had is probably that red spot, uh, either the old sherry or the cask. Uh, okay. What, 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 because it was just that old sherry is a very very good red breast, uh, or the, the one of those cask strength ones are are just. I mean, I do think Middleton know what they're doing. The, oh, hi, the, Klaus. Good to see you the, there. The Klaus, Mick, and who else did I miss? Uh, well, 
And yeah, yeah. So me, if I have to ask, it's a tough question. I will hesitate between uh, my favorite Irish whiskey, between probably Red Breast 15, but not the current one, the yeah. first edition, 2005. Also, this one, uh, for store pick for France, which is absolutely stunning. 43%, by the way. Uh, Jameson, 12 um uh, not necessarily this one but all these series from the nectar uh in the bush meals over 20 years old they're absolutely crazy um i will probably add um <laughs> still this i'm gonna switch them to uh yeah to connemara because they're pitted so for the last leave them for the last uh, and also, I have another one, which is in my top 75. Uh, can I do that? Sorry, guys, for a minute. <laughs> I was just saying that I haven't, I haven't tried this in a while. So I'm going to find a glass that's relatively clean. Can you? Can we do something? I got, are you? Are you gonna watch the replay or not, uh, Jim? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Let's face it. We've all got time in our hands at the minute, haven't we? <laughs> okay, but you. Uh, okay, shall I spoil your blind? Go ahead. It's because not gonna happen. Go ahead. I know you're dying too. So go ahead. Top <laughs> it's one of my top seventy-five whiskeys in my. Uh, List of uh, out of uh, three thousand eleven, eleven. <coughs> sorry, <Wow. clears throat> and I think I rated it a uh, kind of Jim Murray score. Sorry, guys, <coughs> not very crazy. It's not in, in this uh, box anymore because it's uh, I should have bought two or three of this. 12 years old, travel retail, Caribbean cask, r Finnish rum cask. It's the old camera again. 40% ABV, one liter, but the most a... bush meals, the most balanced and the most uh, complex bush meals I ever tried. Is that a it's, uh, No, it's travel retail exclusive and oh. it's. Uh, there's some sherry, there's some American bourbon. The label is very confusing. <clears throat> and then Caribbean rum cask finish. Uh, 12 years old. Select casks is the name of the uh, of the expression. And you had a sample in, uh, <laughs> in the, as a blind. <laughs> and I have only now... Uh, I had a problem with the cork, so it's it's not empty. It's empty, but I have still 40 cl of it somewhere. But yeah, it's one of my five favorite, five favorite, let's say, uh, Irish whiskeys ever. Around 55 euros. Um, let me. S Sorry, guys. Improvised checking. <coughs> Let me tell you when it was released, people. You know, it was a time where there was a lot of choice, and there were uh, people were hesitating and leaving the good stuff for around 50 euros, saying, Oh, we don't know this one, let's not take it. Uh, 2000. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Oh, I don't have the weird. I think it's around 2008. So it was the time you could find crazy things. And at the same time, you had one of my favorite Macallan that I didn't bought, unfortunately. Uh, it's much better than many things they have now. It's the 12 years old Elegancia, yeah, which was a travel retail as well. Exclusive. Uh, let's see what the guys are saying. Trinity bottles. 
Uh, tilling Trinity bottles. I don't know them. Oh, hi, Andrew uh, from Australia. Uh, Chris, uh, the, the Tilling Trinity is the the single malt, the single grain, and the small batch. Oh, oh, that's all it means. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which I will recommend to buy as there are paddies offer. Um, honestly, uh, the regular paddy is very sweet. More a mixer or something, if you agree. Yeah, it's very sweet. But I don't know. They did a, a anniversary bottling. Uh, was it was it interesting? I don't remember the name. I, I just tried it. An old I label. And I remember, and literally within the last year, they were talking about a full rebrand, a full Paddy's rebrand. But I haven't heard any more of that coming about. It, it seemed to die off again. So I would just say to Luna, Paddy's is a cheap Irish blend. Uh, I wouldn't spend an awful lot on a class, uh, the, the normal patties. So, um, um, I think I forgot the answer. Uh, do you remember a recent uh, advertising uh, gym for uh, was it a Middleton, the oldest Middleton on the market? Can you tell? The that one price was insane. Was very, that was, was that Middleton very rare? The new Middleton very one of the uh, new Middleton? Not the regular one. It's something in a in a decanter, a very luxury decanter. And that was said 45 or something like that. Right. The oldest Irish uh, whiskey uh, ever proposed on the market. But uh, I just saw the ad and forgot to... That was going to be ridiculously expensive, I would imagine. <laughs> yes, because 10 years ago, La Maison du Whisky had a store pick exclusive and it was the Middleton. I couldn't have the chance to try it, but I will die to try it. 1973, around 30 years old, 53 ABV, percent ABV. Right. And it was already 3,000 francs, uh, euros, sorry. <laughs> Impossible to reach those. Uh, I think even the, the middle and very rares have a yeah, it's because expensive some of, because some of them are pretty much well, you know. But the, my father in law has one, he's not a whiskey drinker, not a big whiskey drinker. And it, it was one of the 1991 releases, I, I believe. Somebody bought it for him, and uh, and it's sitting there. And it's one of these things that I hope it's, it's going to be in my uh will or in his will for me <laughs> when the time comes <laughs> because but then again what do you do with a whiskey like that do you open it and drink it it has a legacy yeah. so sure. you know it's hard to know okay i'm gonna pour me a last whiskey and maybe uh we can go maybe for a quarter what do you think well i actually poured myself just because you were you were waving Connemara, but and it's so long since I've had the Connemara. The cast strength? Uh, no, it's just the uh, it's the classic. The regular. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have the fifteen. I'm gonna have the fifteen with you, which That's is cool. a single cast. Very. Uh, it's not common now. Uh, and to answer to Andrew, we did answer earlier on, and we kind of agreed uh, on yellow spot. 12 years old on the red breast 12 on um what was else For the beginners jameson stout cask mates uh, jameson 18 i will add but not the latest version if you can find this might be rare buy it it's uh, absolutely stunning uh, bush meals uh and the, the packaging is insane three parts the packaging. I have it behind somewhere. Rowan, and he's saying that Rowan Co. Packaging. Rowan Co. Yeah, uh, I haven't tried it. What can you tell us about this? Uh, it's R O is an E. It's it's Rowan like Co. yeah. It's we well, get again. It's 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 something that somebody else is putting out. It's somebody else's uh, new make spirit. Is it but, again indie? Uh, indie. Yeah, bottling. pretty much. But it it's, say, it's, name. it's the thing that confuses me in Irish whiskey, I have to say. Yeah. Like some uh, US ones. Uh, I would prefer the stated right from the start, indie bottling. And totally agree. Totally agree. And Irish whiskey 
is going to change. The face of Irish whiskey is going to change in the next 10 years because all these distilleries that have opened these 40 yeah. or so distilleries that have opened in the last 15 years are going to be crazy. their own their own whiskey will then be on the market. So we'll know then what we're drinking as opposed to what yeah. we're drinking now. So but, Jim, tell me, I think about what you're saying, uh, I forgot to say because I did a quick historic, uh, historical uh, survey very quick in the beginning of the video. But there's a boom now since only a few years. Uh, would you say five or six years, not more? Probably, you're going back more. maybe 10 years yeah probably about 10 years there's been a massive yeah, because... step forward but it, it all these distilleries is, as you and i know are still using new make spirit or bought casks full filled casks from the three big names oh, Middleton, Bushmills, and Cooley. but there are so, many, many now. yeah so it's but because as i say at some point now you're starting to see tealing single grain is yeah. Tealing's own single grain. You know, you're starting to see these. Uh, well, not my favorite, by the way, but uh, yeah, yeah to, I would agree. <laughs> I prefer the malt. Yeah, but you know why? Because there's a wine finish, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's the red wine cask finish. That's correct. Yeah. There you go, QUD. Uh, David, I can answer you uh, under the control of Jim uh, Connemara uses Irish peat, right? Pit box. There are lots of yeah. pit box in Ireland. Uh, Greg, I will actually send you a link that my brother-in-law made of his family cutting peat. Uh, Ooh, by hand. Nice. They, still, they still do it once a year. Uh, Fantastic. And I'll send you a link of that. Wow, and, that's uh, cool. Something I used to do. It, I used to help friends out bagging peat and whatnot in their land, and it's just something that we keep traditional. Oh, I love that. There you go. Talking about peat, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> and cheers again, cheers. Happy St. Patrick, everyone. I love this kind of pit. This is special. This is a bit. I haven't, I haven't tried that in ages. This was my one of my first favorite Irish whiskies because I took the peat very quickly. Didn't you know? Some people don't like peat. I I took to it very quickly. Uh, and cheers, Klaus. Good night. It just brought something because I quite liked Irish whiskey and I liked peat. It but brought nice... honestly, forty six percent makes it already much, and the fact yeah. this is a single cask, it's even more uh, unusual and less rounded. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. I like is this kind of uh, buttery, dusty, even a bit farmy, uh, even some stable notes and Campbell Downish. Amazing, right? But you you also said earlier on too, and I'm getting it here. Very very fresh lemon. Yeah, bright tones. And some leather, some Lagavulin leather. I might say for me. No, it's too much underrated. I think Connemara is a really beautiful single malt, and the. Distillers addition did some harm to the reputation of the distillery because I think often Oloroso, when it's not very powerful and very well combinated, such as the latest Ben Roma I talked about in my videos, uh, cast strength, heavily pitted sherry, uh, it tend to, like in Lagavulin Distillers Edition, to uh, underpower uh, or to erase the peat in a way to bring some delicate fruity notes, but the pit is subdued automatically. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And this is what I felt in the Connemara Distillers Edition. I, it's not that it it's not good, but it for me, it doesn't have this blast of pit that even yeah. the 40% yeah. you have has a bit. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I really pray you to have your samples because there's this one in there too. <laughs> oh, so do I, and I won't. I won't let that lie. I, I, I will not let that lie. I'm going to keep chasing that up. I, yeah. I went to the post, post office today. Uh, some of our or most of our post offices are closed because it's a, a public holiday. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Maybe you have to wait. And they kept that aside. You don't know. You but have the trucking. So you'll never yeah. know. 
and uh, I, and I will I will keep on top of that, my friend, because I really want to try what you sent. And I know you sent some very special anyway, stuff. Don't worry, we will fix that. I will send them again later on after oh, all the yes. mess. <laughs> Cheers, Andrew. Thanks for stopping by, Andrew. He's uh, very far from here and with a yeah, tiny other side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Take care, buddy. I hope Australia is safe coronavirus-wise, by the way. Hmm. Still eight people watching. Thank you, guys. To, uh, we're not going to be very long, but uh, we enjoy sharing with you our taste of whiskey. That's Behind me, I, yeah, I put a lot of uh, <laughs> Irish bottlings. <laughs> uh, and the whiskey magazine spe uh, was uh, specialized in Irish. <laughs> <laughs> that I managed to find in my archives. <laughs> All these beautiful boxes. Let me show the people uh, this beautiful, unusual uh, metallic Connemara cast strength, uh, bit glassy uh, tube. I, I like this one. It's very people uh, cutting peat, by the way, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. So yeah, we, we used to have that at a decent price, and now we don't have them anymore. It's my late last bottle. Well, there was a there was a blend between a Scotch was it Brook Laddie put it out? Celtic um, Nation. That's very the one. That's the very one. And then and I have a special I, story to talk about. I was very Let's sorry to see it. I tried I tried a sample of it and was very sorry to see it go. To me, that's something that should be tried more often. Why not? Yeah. Forbidden by SWA immediately. That's correct. Yeah. But yeah. believe me or not, and you can ask John Glazer about it, my uh, supporter of my website. Mm -hmm. I didn't know uh, Jim McEwen and Mark Renier were working on this. And in 2005, I worked on a home blend uh, with my collection. And in 2000, because I wanted to pay homage to John Glazer, I discovered the year before Whiskey Live. Uh, and 2006, Whiskey Live Paris, I come back. Uh, sorry, people, if it, you heard the story before. I come back to the show with a blend of mine, home blend, mm -hmm. uh, that I wanted to pay homage to the uh, what Jim was doing and also to be a symbolic... Uh, whiskey about what was going on between Ireland and uh, and England, even if it was Scottish, it was not English whiskey in there. So I mixed I a Connemara with mm -hmm. some uh, Scottish single malts and I named it with a Greek name because he likes Greek or Latin names called Irini, that means peace in Greece, in Greek. And I gave him the sample and it appears he liked it a lot and that's how he invited me uh, in 2007 to blend with him in his studio. Wow. So I created this, and uh, when I gave him the sample, a few months after the Celtic Nations was out. But in theory, I was the first to do that in the world. <laughs> Irish with Scottish whiskey. But nobody knows because it was not on the market. <laughs> so. Well done, my friend. I, I just think it should be done more often. I really do. I agree with you, and I'm working on a world whiskey just for fun in my cabinet, uh, which I would like to highlight the best things of four, at least four or five nations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy with the, the partial results, but I, I gave up working on this six months ago with so many things I struggled with. Uh, the only thing I created recently uh, is an infinity bottle, and uh, it took four months for me to be satisfied with the result but now i'm satisfied with the result so uh i, had I, hope an infinity, I, I had an infinity bottle very early on and uh pretty much ruined it with irish whiskey and uh, it, it well, I, I don't know. did i put irish in this one i don't remember because I didn't work it like a, a regular uh, home blend creation of mine that is uh, noting down every uh, distillery, every uh, percentage of uh, 
the amount of each whiskey and calculating the ABV, uh, noting everything very... Uh, I did blend 69, 69 different blends since 2005. And believe me or not, some are even have 40 whiskeys in there, 35 to 40 right. whiskeys. And the, one of the most successful idea that was presented in a restaurant has whiskeys, uh, even they were not on the market, and they were only given to us for a dinner. And I kept some of that, some rare outbags that I mixed with Glen Marais and Glen Moranges and it, it had some success, symbolic success in the restaurant, <laughs> in the whiskey menu, but it was a surprise out of uh, any commercial use. I think blending. And, and, yeah, I'm and, crazy uh, about that. I, I yeah. cannot, I will let you speak. I cannot really tell people, you know, uh, you're aware of that, but I cannot really tell people yet of something very cool that happened yeah. to me yesterday. But yeah, cr let's cross fingers. Uh, if things work well after this uh, crisis, health crisis, I might work with a distillery, I cannot name at the moment, uh, to create a single malt from an original recipe uh, and in three years a blended whiskey. And it will be a bit exclusive because the two recipes are, ha haven't been seen on that market so far. So I am really happy to collaborate uh, as a blender uh, with this uh, distillery and I uh, hope this will work. I will be very proud to present you uh, these bottles if they, they they come across the market. And maybe, guys, I can announce you that do a giveaway with one bottle during a live of mine. So stay tuned. <laughs> and, and, and well done. Really. Sorry to be long. I hope so. Uh, crossing fingers. Yeah. Now I'm going to drop a few, uh, put a few drops of water in that. Um, Connemara. Connemara, for those who arrive now, uh, is a, um, let me, is it this? No. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a double distilled instead of three usually in Ireland. Uh, pitted Irish whiskey, one of the very rare. That leads me to uh, maybe a last question for you, Jim. By the way, are they around the new distilleries coming up now in Ireland? Other distilleries that wish to do pitted whiskies? Can you tell yes. us? Hinch, Hinch Distillery is, is doing a pitted Good. whiskey. Uh, they're they're currently uh, it's, it's going to be another Northern Ireland distillery opening in North. Uh, they're opening hopefully May June, but obviously things have okay. changed a bit. But uh, yes, they do a they they currently have a five year old, ten year old, and a pitted edition. And uh, now, obviously, right. again, it's somebody else's. Oh. with at the moment, but I we'll have, have to wait. I have heard that, and I asked the question yet again. I'll not name any names of who I asked. Okay, okay. But uh, is this yet? Is this an indie bottling in a peat cask? You know, in an X, an X peat cask. And I was told by, and he was a very good, a very good source, and he said no they are peating it the way it should be done. So Good. Uh, oh. we're back. Okay. Ho hopefully we're back. And that's just one. I, I, I do imagine that a lot of these newer distilleries will be peating again because oh, people want cool. it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah honestly, uh, when you go, uh, let's say after, I don't know if you taste a lot of whiskey if you're tired after doing a show, but <laughs> uh, when you discuss with your friends, let's say even outside this context, uh, how far is the important is the demand from the audience for pitted whiskies uh, from your people, country? Let's say. People are lazy about whiskey in Ireland, unfortunately. Not the producers, oh. but the drinkers of whiskey in Ireland. And the They're people that hate... Beers. Yeah, the people that the people that that dislike peat peated whiskey most are probably Irish. I find most oh. of most of the uh, most of my friends who work in the business, work in the in industry, 
who sell whiskey, work in bars, etc., stuff like that there. If you set a Lefroig in front of them or an Ardbeg or something like that there, they oh. would probably physically be sick. They they just do not like peated whiskey. But oh my God. It, it's just it's something that I'm trying to change their minds about and say, look, and this was something that, yet again, Connemara, I always thought was a yeah, great the 40%. Was, was to say, look, try this first. Uh, it's from your I, country. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, ta uh, Talisker, I, I I tend to direct people through Talisker and say, yeah. try Tal or Highland Park or something like that and say, look, well, let's try going or gently with this. Rock Island blended malt from Douglas Lang is wonderful. Exactly. Uh, now, I, nice I, I went, exactly, and I went the other way even with the, the Rock Oyster. Uh, and if you want something with real drive and go with something like the Rock Oyster from Douglas Lang and just go, you know, something big. And it just takes them, it just takes them to, to break in gently, I think. That may and they will. Oh, nice information. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, just you. saying that from Jason. <laughs> Always on the on the front <laughs> row to answer. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, schön. <laughs> Und danke sehr uh, auch uh, Linda. <laughs> my old German studies. <laughs> Never uh, been. Love the love the German language. Never studied it. Uh, I really it's it just it's something. It's a language I've always been very appreciative of. So L Luna and uh, Jason, uh, du bist uh, fantastisch. Danke sehr. <laughs> And yeah, we talked about Germany. We didn't mention Rammstein. <laughs> <laughs> Zone, my favorite track, Zone. <laughs> I, also, sorry, I also noticed Luna saying earlier on that she has bought the uh, Red Breast 12 cask strength yellow spot. Yeah. 55 euros. Uh, yeah, it's a good price, but. <laughs> that is a good. I, I, I would, honestly, I would buy it at that price. It's, it's much no more expensive for me yep. here it's 74 pounds here probably so, 80 euros here on yeah one. so 55 but euros very batch variations do not take beware batch variations yeah this is it sometimes it will be stunning others it will be average uh i'm afraid to say that but uh, yeah, it's true so <laughs> another thing so just saying whiskey jason then i uh, i noticed jason yes. and i had a, had a bit of a chat with, with, with one of his videos and he said about uh triple distillation in irish whiskey and yet again it's how they word it i recently did the sat the wset the same as johnny from uh oh, cool. spirits people and you learn an awful lot in these things and they discuss about triple distillation in irish whiskey and you mm. and i know that that a column still uh the coffee still whichever whichever way you want to put it uh, yeah, is used in mass production of Irish whiskey, and obviously Middleton will yeah. have a column still. But what Middleton will have is a column still split into three sections because they're too tall to fit into one. Okay, factor. They consider that triple distillation, but it's not. It's a continuous distillation, okay. as we know. The column still, the way you want to put it. Okay, sorry for the echo. I was just checking yeah. if the image was okay on YouTube, but I had to put up, put it off. Uh, yeah, prices in Germany are very good for uh, Irish whiskey as well. I see, <laughs> lucky guys. Pretty yeah. much for everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> everything whiskey. Um, okay, uh, be, I think it might be time we're reaching two hours to wrap it up. Uh, yeah. Saying you. Uh, yeah. Uh, before I say thank thank you and call goodbye, do you have another thing to say? Let's say uh, one minute or two about Irish whiskey. Now, uh, are you excited about what's coming up? Uh, have you something special to say, uh, Jim? Very much so. I just I, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what these distilleries are going to do. I won't buy a lot of Irish whiskey at the moment. What Luna has done there in buying those three whiskeys, we bought three great whiskies that we know are Middleton whiskey hmm. made with passion made and made with style you know they're, they're done right what a lot of these new distilleries are doing is just as, as we discussed earlier is taking somebody else's 
uh, new makes for yeah. it or, or buying casks and oh. bottling them and putting them out. Sorry, forgot to ask you something, Jim, uh, because I heard a term that I didn't know used this way while uh, having a look at Gigi Cori uh, uh, company uh, held by a woman. And this, she said, I'm not an indie, indie bottler, I'm not a distiller, but I'm a bonder. She's bonding, doing bonding. So Irish basically, bond. she gets distillate from several distilleries and blend them together and did mm -hmm. further maturation. So, but for me, it is not different from indie bottling, right? So I don't understand. Is it a marketing trick or is it's it? A, a, it's, it's, I would suggest it's all terminology. I asked the question very early on about bonding because you see something on Irish bottling, bottled and bond, the same way as you'll see an American bourbon's yes. bottled and bond. Except bottled um, and bond must be, sorry, in the US from one distillery. Yes, it means something totally different in America. Oh. <laughs> so this is the, uh, in America, it Again, means... Again, confusing marketing. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> in America, it means it has to be 50% ABV. It needs to be, you okay. know, if you say one, yeah, sorry. Now we live with, uh, with Jason uh, C from Mash and Drum. Uh, please yeah. check this one, it, guys, it, if you are US whiskeys. It, but, it means something in America, but in Ireland, it's basically bonded. Uh, it's it's warehouse bonded. It's an old, to my knowledge now, Jason would probably tell tell us better. I don't want to go too far into it because I don't okay. want to say something. I don't want to say something. Yeah, that I haven't tried anything, before. so I can wait to try, of course, as well. It, it, it's basically, it's, it's warehouse bonded. It's something to do with, to my knowledge, it's something to do with uh, British taxation yet again. Okay, but I, and I saw she, was, she also tried, uh, this woman uh, said that she tried tequila casks, maybe prior to anyone else, and uh, before the AGO tried, uh, they changed the regulation in uh, Scotland, UK, to use tequila cask last year. Mm -hmm. But it seems Gigi Corey in Ireland tried this before. So I don't know what's the result again, and even mescal cask. Uh, <laughs> me? If you ask me, I would prefer uh, something like I said somewhere, uh, uh, people seem interested, but I'm not the master blender. I'm not working for a company yet, or I won't never, I don't know. But me, I will try a bourbon maturation of something maybe slightly pitted already or not, mm -hmm. and then try a mescal cask finish. I yeah. think this could be interesting. So I like because that. I close to Isla style, Kulila and stuff. Yeah. Then if you go to some kind of sherry and, and then mescal or wine cask and mescal, oh, I'm not sure result would I just, be great. I do, I do like the fact that Ireland can live within the rules of wood. It must be matured in wood. To me, they doesn't don't. Say oak. Jim doesn't say oak, but wood. Well, uh, no, I th I, there's something... Even if it's no, I think it's just wood. That's okay, uh, that's interesting. Interesting. Uh, so, it, so your 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 restrictions are not the same. Uh, certainly, whenever we look yet again, we mentioned them earlier on. Whenever you look at at, at, at there you go Mira, <laughs> again. Whiskey Jason has the answer. <laughs> Thank you. You gotta love Jason. <laughs> you gotta love him. Yeah, uh, but he has. I suspect he has his Google on the side <laughs> with no disrespect <laughs> to check because otherwise he has a his mm. head should be too big. <laughs> Love you, Jesus. But it's just it, it, it's but it helps I mean, a lot. Exactly. And we looked at uh, we talked about uh well, there you are, he says Ireland yeah. is wood, not oak. Yeah. So uh, uh we, so sorry to interrupt you. That's why, and I remember the uh, interview of Mark, Mark Renier, probably that's why he moved. I was very surprised he, he created this three in Ireland and not Scotland, but I mm -hmm. think he wanted to have looser regulations. Yeah. My guess. We, we live in a time that where the world is trying different things with whiskey. Yeah. Why restrict yourself if you don't have to? Yeah, sure. Canada has the loosest regulation, if I understand well. Don Livermore, who I had as a guest. Uh, but then if you had possibility to add everything 
and to do every kind of cask. If you're someone reasonable and uh, you want to keep control of the quality you have, the, does, this is not because you have, uh, let's say, in a palette of painter or, or for you on your uh, on your guitar, you have uh, all these array of notes that you're going to necessarily use all of them. You can yeah. just use this or this, and uh, I think you can do great things. Ralphie said it recently, and or I, I watched the review of Ralphie's one time about Mike Mira, and, and he said oh. it about Mike Mira, Mike Mira whiskey in Sweden, and he said they, they live by uh, the Scottish Whiskey Association rules. Why? That nobody has ever, nobody, huh. as far as he knew at the time, told them they had to live under those rules. Yeah, sure. So, sure. Uh, check out, please, people who are interested in what we were saying. Uh, check out the review, and I will do that also uh, from this. It was GG Corey, right? Yeah, Battalion Irish Whiskey in his oh, website. I guess I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, yeah. I, will look. I will do as well. Great channel, <laughs> by the way. And I've yeah, decided, uh, I've decided to, to try some of this again. I haven't had it in a while. Ah, so. uh, one thing we didn't mention, uh, Jim, is your way of doing reviews. And I wanted before we leave to pay homage to you and say I like the way you mix uh, editing and um, simple talking about things. So you give just a bit of information. You have a fancy music uh, before you and a personal intro, by the way. Uh, and now you're experimenting funny things we won't say too much about because you might see some surprises. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Alex, for instance, you're one of the, honestly, the reviewers that are here for uh, decades. And you're one of those who talk the best about the famous 2.5 distillation um, Process from Springbank in a stunning review of a 12 years old uh, Springbank recently, and I liked a lot the, re the review. Uh, also, the color chart was nice with those black and white, and uh, and also you have this crazy turning bottle. You have some day to explain, <laughs> <laughs> or is a mystery. How you do that? No, 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 no. I, I always, I film, would you believe I actually film the bottles a month in advance? So I know exactly which bottles I'm going to review over the next four oh, cool. to six weeks. So I, I, I have a I have a black uh, cardboard tube, which I, I set the bottles in on a little revolving disc. Oh. And, and I just film them spinning uh, with lights yeah. shining through them, stuff like that. And See, then, I'm uh, not the only one to say. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, the, the the effort. I I was so delighted that people liked uh, that review for the simple fact that I, I really struggled to find information about that two point five distillation, <clears throat> and it, it was string by themselves that that sort yeah. of threw that up to me. So cool. I was told the process by the man himself, Frank McCarty, which I had the, the occasion to have dinner with him and also see him in a festival in Belgium. But honestly, I forgot. I didn't note everything. So, well, and even me, tell every... me, please tell me I was close. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you were, but you, it's the kind of things that I cannot explain. And honestly, when uh, Matt, I had, I was in a live uh, with Air Ear Whiskey, Matt. Yeah. Uh, and he said, oh, yeah, Greg knows about everything. No, no, I don't know about everything. And I, I said, I cannot tell you what is the Mortlach, Mortlach process of 2.81. That's why they do it different. I so. cannot explain. I, I don't understand it. It's too complicated. <laughs> 2.5 is already complicated. It's a question of recycling <laughs> this or that from the distilling process. But... Uh, yeah, you did very well, not only with this one, but uh, this is one of your really uh, most, uh, let's say, kind of, um, oh, I'm still forgetting my English. Uh, this one will will date, will be a, a date for you. Uh, well, I've, said, I've said it before, Greg, your Benchmark. English is so much better than my French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but I studied, I <laughs> supposed to have studied English <laughs> uh, until the university and even a bit after one year. Uh, but uh, well, it's better than my German and my Italian. <laughs> That's it's something I always say, uh, I always give credit to uh, every other European country than this side of the, is that you s at least learn each other's languages, you study it. I did some French in school and then it all fell apart and just went wrong. Well, as long as you don't, it, who cares? I mean, it can help when you have finishes in wine, red wine, French wine, uh, to, to know some French to pronounce those uh, wines. Yeah. <laughs> so the pronunciation is what is what always just ruins me. We I was in France. I I, I holidayed in France. Uh, three, three years ago. Yeah, I went to Normandy. I, I, I wanted to, to to visit Normandy and see the beaches and that sort of thing. And beautiful time, beautiful mm. country. Uh, but my wife had studied French in school and she did well. So she did all the translating oh. for eating oh. out and etc. And and it just you know it was a good a good time was had you know and and just. I was very pleased. Loved it. Next time you visit Normandy, I will give you a tip for a place to visit. Very special. And you might, uh, it might be related to a topic we discussed before. <laughs> 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 okay, I think now uh, it's a good, I could stay all night, but my computer, not sure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, connection as well, but uh, I will like to thank you very much, Jim, for being my guest, and I hope we'll thank do other lives. Uh, even about Scottish whiskey, if you like, about uh, any and a special one, maybe about music. Who knows? Uh, I did say uh, this already to Frederick because with Frederick from Whiskey Pilgrim, we share a lot of metal music taste. But who knows? Maybe <laughs> I don't <laughs> listen only to metal. I have music, independent rock music, world music from different countries. I have even some uh, Celtic stuff from. Uh, your country, but we haven't the right to broadcast music yeah. without uh, being taking yeah. the risk to be. Uh, otherwise, I would have put a nice background, Lorena McKennett, uh, Clannad, maybe, or uh, yeah. Wells. Uh, you two is too famous now, but uh, <laughs> you yeah. have also. Uh, oh, yeah. Lizzie was a great band, also from Classic. Ireland, right? Classic. Uh, yeah. Phil Lynott. Yeah. Yep. Good artist. Rest in peace. God. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. The angel of death. <laughs> 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 I like the Holy War, uh, the uh, uh, Renegade album, and the uh, also what's the other one with the thund thunder and lightning? I like those. See, I, was a, I was a big fan of. Uh, I was a punk back in the day, so uh, Stiff Little Fingers were one of my bands, and. Uh, uh. Very, very. They they were cl very close to where I'm at. Actually, Stiff Little Fingers and uh, Snow Patrol, who aren't exactly oh, Snow Patrol. Is nice, Snow Patrol yeah. uh, nice one of the bars that we played in or we play in is where they. Oh, started. you opened for Snow Patrol. They, they began Ooh. in. So they began in one of those bars. So uh, fantastic. Of of course, people know. Uh, What's the name? Because I I used to listen to them a lot of uh, cranberries, uh, but yeah, now I don't yeah. know anymore. Yeah. But probably the most famous band from after you two, right? From yeah. Your well, it's, well, it's funny because Thin Lizzy are very well, you know. So you're going back, to Gary Moore yeah. and 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 then Van Morrison and whatnot. So oh, of course, yeah, yeah. But we're a bit old, so that's why we mentioned Thin Lizzy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The youngsters do not know this man. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheers, mate. And uh, again, thank you so much uh, for coming in. Uh, it was a real thank pleasure. You. And uh, we're going to work some things el yes. else together. Yeah, David likes stiff little fingers. <laughs> um, so again, happy St. Patrick, everyone. And uh, please stay safe. Take care of yourself and your relatives. Uh, drink responsibly. Uh, pubs are closed, so you cannot. I hope you found a solution, by the way, Jim. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what can we say else? Uh, 
the Irish whiskey scene uh, seems to be very, uh, uh, it's a boom now, it seems to be very exciting with some things we hear in interviews, we, uh, we see of Dingle, uh, even Gigi Corey, uh, Waterford. Mm -hmm. So I really look forward to try all they do and even other distilleries that I don't know yet. So they probably will have to go back and do another Irish theme. Oh, yes. Maybe in this a year or two. This time next year, my friend. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Cheers to that. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Luna, you're the best. Uh, Whiskey Jason, you're an encyclopedia once again. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you, all the guys who stayed until the end once again. Malcolm, sorry I didn't uh, salute you before. Uh, and uh, everyone, please take care and see you next time. There will be other themed, uh, country themed uh, live in the following uh, months. There will be a Swedish one very soon, and there will be a German one very soon. Haha, -ha, spoilers. <laughs> thank you again, Jim. Take care, thank buddy. You, Have you. a great night. Love you, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye bye.